employs valuation specialists. So we have certain types of intangible assets. Again, if we're in a movie industry or something like that, we're going to need specialists in order to get in there and figure out what the value is with regards to these intangible assets. And we want to know to what degree uh, people are relying on, on specialists or who are the specialists are in, that are applying the valuation of these intangible assets. We want to consider any significant management assumptions in determining the fair value as well. So anytime we think about something, if there's an estimate being involved and there's basically assumptions within the valuation process, then that could be a place that there could be problems. Of course, we are want to have some uh, understanding of what the, uh, the management assumptions would be with regards to valuation. We also want to consider the integrity of change controls and security procedures for valuation models and information systems. Uh, we also want to have controls over the approval processes as well. Now we've considered the inherent risk and the control risk related to intangible assets. Now we're going to consider the substantive procedures, same kind of process we have here. We got the inherent risk, we've got the control risk. And then we consider the detection risk relation to the substantive testing, how much substantive testing we would have to do. Then uh, tests related to valuation and impairment of intangible assets are often necessary because of the complexity and degree of judgment uh, increase the risk of material misstatements. So we want to test basically the valuation and any type of impairment process. Because again, these intangible assets being on the books, one, what was the valuation process they were put on the books? And two, how would we know if they decreased in value? If you talk about something like goodwill, then we're, we're concerned with basically the decrease in value. We'd have to put in some tests in order to do that. It may take specialists for us to go in and determine whether or not there's been a decrease, a problem within the valuation of some of these intangible assets, things like trademarks, things like goodwill. Uh, substantive evidence is required for all significant accounts and substantive analytical procedures are loan are not generally enough to provide sufficient evidence for uh, significant transactions involving intangible assets. So we can't really just rely on, in other words, the analytical procedures with regards to significant amounts uh, with intangible assets. You'll recall that the analytical procedures are those types of procedures that I just envision you can envision the auditor nice and cozy in their little in their auditing office at their uh, at their company office or at their firm's office as opposed to the substantive test that we would typically think of as going to the business and doing more calculations at the business so the normal kind of comparison to the industry standards or comparisons to other companies or comparisons year over year that we may do substantive analytical procedures are not typically going to be sufficient if we're if we're talking about uh, transactions or large transactions relation related to intangible assets, we want to do uh, more things usually related to the valuation and the impairment, of course. So the assertion considerations uh, for tests of details will typically include existence as the existence of the intangible assets. Again, they're intangible. So <laughs> we want to make sure that they exist and we can't just go out and look at them as we would if it was property plans and equipment. So that's going to be a concern for us to consider the valuation of them. Again, they're intangible and oftentimes they're somewhat unique if we're talking about book rights, copyrights, movie rights, or goodwill to one particular type of company, then we want to, we're concerned with evaluation, completeness, rights and obligations to the, to the rights and obligations of the uh, assets actually belong to the company, especially if there's legal rights with relation to things like goodwill or, or, or things like uh, copyrights. We want to make sure that they have the legal rights to them. And then, of course, classification.